All right, so I thought we were done with the winter season, uh, but uh, we had a cold front move through. I thought I'd do a video here on our tiny wood stove that we installed in our 2016 Keystone Montana fifth wheel camper. Uh, this stove is from tinywoodstove.com. It's the 4KW. Puts out approximately 20,000 to 30,000 BTUs as, uh, as they advertise. The, uh, the stove itself weighs approximately 100 pounds. One of the, the first modifications that, that I did was uh, I welded up this uh, stand uh, from one inch angle iron. Welded it directly to the feet of the, um, uh, of the stove and uh, that first, uh, first and foremost allowed us so that we weren't, uh, we could load the stove with, stove with wood without having to kneel on the ground uh, down there. And then uh, two, it provided um, more than adequate clearance to um, remain clear of any combustibles that, uh, down near the floor. Uh, I've got the electric space heater underneath because the uh, longest burn time that, we, that I was able to achieve was only about two to three hours from the stove. So throughout the nighttime, we would um, supplement with electric heat. The uh, only other um, modification that I did uh, to the stove was uh, they could have improved the handle design. It's uh, it's solid, solid metal, and um, in order to avoid using a glove to open the door uh, all the time, I just bought a piece of half-inch inner diameter silicone tubing and uh, cut it to fit, slid it over, and it's worked perfectly. So I can open and close the door uh, without having to put a glove on. The two adjustments that it has, it has the um, primary air baffle air intake uh, along the bottom, and then there's a secondary that slides right and left uh, on the top for the uh, secondary burn. Using those two, you can uh, you can fine tune your your burn rate, and then we've got the uh, temperature gauge uh, on the single wall flue pipe there to um, determine safe uh, safe temperature, safe uh, safe settings. So for the heat shielding on the on the flue pipe itself, uh, it's four inch single wall pipe going up, and I took a, a six inch uh, piece of single wall pipe, cut it, uh, more or less ripped it with a uh, angle uh, angle uh, grinder, and uh, put some bolts. Put them in there. So put, just put some bolts for a standoff from the from that uh, flue pipe. And you can see going all the way up, uh, and then there's the uh, going into the double wall uh, pipe and exiting the uh, through the roof. I used a heat gun throughout to make sure that, uh, or excuse me, uh, one of the uh, infrared guns to make sure that uh, there was no hot spots. Um, this worked extremely well. This is very, this is very cool behind the uh, behind this heat shielding. So. Uh, worked very effectively. Same thing, same thing with back here. Um, worked. Uh, this heat shielding works extremely effectively. You probably, I probably could have even moved, uh, mounted the stove even closer to the wall, um, but this is a uh, this is adequate. It allows us to retract the RV in and out, uh, the slide, excuse me, in and out as uh, as necessary. On the back side, we. Um, there is uh, prescribed uh, distances as far as how far you, sh you should be away from combustibles, such as uh, you know wood walls and stuff like this. Uh, took a piece of 24 inch by 24 inch uh, uh, sheet uh, steel, uh, bent it with a brake, and um, I welded some standoffs. And where I welded, so I didn't want to compromise the overall stove. I figured I could get these legs, which are just bolted to the bottom of the primary stove, uh, I could get those re uh, replaced probably pretty easily. Um, I welded these direct directly to the, uh, the feet, and then on the back side, there's um, this stove has the option of either having the flue coming out at the top or out of the back. Uh, so I uh, welded that standoff there right directly onto the uh, the secondary option for the flue outlet. Uh, so if I ever wanted to take that off, it would be a fairly easy process. Going out of the roof, we used the double insulated uh, pipe from uh, that we purchased directly from uh, tinywoodstoves.com, um, and I'm going to show you some pictures a little bit later of the uh, of the exiting chimney pipe. 
The most stressful part of this installation was cutting a hole in our brand new fifth wheel roof. Uh, I measured several times, made sure I had the right spot, and uh, the clearance for the double wall pipe is two inches uh, outside of that. So I measured uh, this is a 10 inch hole. I wanted to make sure that the installation was structurally solid, so I took some two by fours, cut them to fit, and installed them between the roof and the ceiling uh, to reinforce. Here's a picture of the stainless steel double walled pipe uh, that's used to exit through the ceiling of the RV. If you can see the insulation, uh, it's the overall pipe is six inches in diameter. Here's a photo of the uh, nearly complete install of the chimney pipe coming out of the camper. Uh, it's a silicone boot uh, that was supplied by tinywoodstoves.com and then uh, there's a silicone caulk from where the, uh, the boot also contacts the camper. For added insurance, I added some Eternabond uh, tape around, around the seam of where the boot uh, contacted the camper. This is simply a photo of the uh, adapter for the going from the double walled to the single walled pipe. The primary concern throughout this installation was safety uh, from, from that of a fire. Uh, this is a photo of the original heat shielding. The second one was just an improvement upon that. I used a uh, infrared temperature gun throughout the installation and testing to make sure that there are no hot spots and no possible areas that uh, could, have, could have created a fire. I misspoke a few times in the video. Uh, the place that I purchased the stove from was called tinywoodstove.com. So if you have a wood stove, you need to sweep your chimney. Um, this brush was for a six inch uh, flue pipe. I have a four inch. All I did was I took a belt sander and sanded it down to fit. Uh, and then I mounted it to a PVC pipe. Here's a picture of our camper. You can see the chimney coming out, uh, indicated by the red arrow. We will have been full-timing in this uh, RV for two years uh, next month. So if we were using this strictly for, for vacationing, I probably would have never installed the wood stove. But uh, being that it was our primary residence, that's why I, I made the consideration. Lots of things to take into account when installing this. Um, but... Uh, I knew, I knew that uh, I had read lots of forums, lots of people uh, strongly against installing a wood stove in a camper. So if you're going to consider this, uh, please weigh all the risks. Uh, do so at your own, own risk, um, and uh, please be safe. I have several, I installed several smoke detectors throughout the house, uh, carbon monoxide detector, um, fire extinguisher in the vicinity, and I went through uh, fire escape um, scenarios with, uh, with our kids. So, uh, again taking all that into consideration, um, please be safe.